Okay. So, he gives you directions to Miyake and Munn's old infirmary slash laboratory. As we part ways, I shake his hand and say it was a pleasure to sail in one of his finest creations. I look forward to doing so again in the future. Uh, he's glad that you enjoyed the ship that he built. And, you know, uh, he looks forward to uh, seeing you again in the future. Or maybe not if we're going to go see Mr. Mon. <laughs> Is uh, Sheer back? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, presumably, we go over to see Mr. Mun's place, then. <clears throat> Lacking any other thing to really be worried, or worried about in the Senti, and as potentially fascinating as these esoteric nights of evolvement are, we don't really have any reason to be <clears throat> worried, about, worried about them right now, as far as I can tell. Uh, no. Um, you have no reason to be concerned with them. Okay, then presumably yeah. we go and find Mr. Mun's place. Um, okay, um, You find this building, um, the ground floor has no windows, um, and the second floor, it has this very high, steep, gabled top. Um, you see the single great iron door standing in the front of the building. Um, there's a, a decaying garden in the front yard. Um, and everything is surrounded by this iron fence six feet high. And there is a gateway and perched upon the gate are a murder of crows. Dun, dun, dun. That seems awesome, right? Yeah, and it's... Uh. I think I need to restart my fantasy ground. Something got messed up. Oh, you're a pain in the ass tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was all tabbed at the exact second that you showed the uh, picture, and thus the display got messed up. <coughs> then I realized that would happen. Oh! Actually, is the whole map supposed to be red with the mask? Yes. Yes. Oh, well never mind then. Now, there is the top left corner that's not... Yes, I do see that. <laughs> I can see the... Wow, that's not what I expected. I can basically see that area right now, but there's a middle area there that's still closed off. Correct. Okay, sorry, I, I thought the red was like some kind of image loading error on my part, not the, one of the Curse of Strahd mask things. 
Okay, so there's a fence around the entire thing. There's no windows. There's like these gables and a murder of crows, and it all looks ominous and mysterious and haunted. Yes. Okay, excellent. So, is there a door that we can approach? Or is, do we have to get over the fence first? Uh, well, you've got to walk through the gate of the fence. Okay, but is the gate, like, open right now, or is it closed? Uh, it is closed. Okay, is there anyone who looks like they're minding the gate? No, not at all. Okay, just how high is this gate? Uh... I can't move my token. Yeah, I can't even select my token. Did you do this whole layer upon layer thing again, Orange Mute? Uh, can you try it? Can you move Still your... can't. He's dragging the whole window around. I just oh, pushed my cursor over my character token doesn't pop anything up, so... Okay, I'll tell you what. <sighs> so I was right, something is wrong. <clears throat> yeah, but it's not only on your end. This is true. And we'll do that, and that should have kicked you guys. Wow. I mean, it's like, okay, get out of here, all of you. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, yeah, reload Fantasy Grounds. All right, say when we should reconnect. No, nah, we're getting there. Maybe. <laughs> when you're opening a campaign, is it taking a while? I mean, I stopped trying to connect since it was taking a long time. Well, uh, to reconnect now? Uh, yes, you can go ahead and reconnect. But I mean, when you're opening up your campaign, is it taking uh, a while? Not that I recall, but I wasn't really timing it at the time. Yeah, the past few weeks it just seems like it's taking longer and longer to open. It does seem like it's taking a while. Well, right now everyone's connected at the same time. <laughs> Usually it doesn't take that long to log back in. Alright, I think I'm back in. Okay. And uh, now I can't select the character.
You can or cannot? We can select the characters now. That is working correctly. Okay. Yes, I just selected the hell out of my character. <laughs> so does that leave the Abyss or the Celestial? Celestial. Oh yeah, I'm all about Celestial. Okay. Um, so, um, yes, uh, you are standing in front of the gate, which is closed. Yes. There's no one in attendance, right? Correct. And you just by the look of the place, um, uh, you don't think he hires an awful lot of outside help? Um, okay, and but the gate is closed. There's no sign of anyone else, and is it just the one building? So, <clears throat> yes. I, I'm trying to. So, what is this thing that's to our, like where Poppy is right now? Is that a gate around the infirmary? Is the infirmary is the entire infirmary that building? So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like 50 feet long and 40 feet wide or something. Yes. So it's a pretty small infirmary then. Well, it's two-story, but yes. Okay, but it, it's not going to hold more than like a dozen or two patients total. Right. Okay, so is this gate... And it hasn't like... been an infirmary in a long time. <laughs> sure, but I'm just talking about the size of it. I was expecting something bigger. This, this looks more like a gatehouse to the infirmary, not the actual infirmary <laughs> itself. That's why I was surprised. Okay, so the wall, is the wall completely solid? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, is the gate completely solid? Uh, no. Okay, what can we see through the gate? In terms of what's around here? Like, because right now everything's blocked inside the gate, right? That right there is the gate? No, uh, that's the front door where Poppy's at. <laughs> Okay, so we're like technically we're not even where we are on the map then right now. Uh, well, correct. You are outside the gate, but if you walk through the gate, that's where you're headed. But the gate is closed right now. Right. Okay. Uh, so we just visualize this then, since it's not on the map. Uh, what do we see, you know, peering through the gaps in the gate? Can, what can we tell about the grounds? Do they look maintained? Uh, Is there any? No, they are not maintained. Okay, so it looks like pretty much just a mad alchemist who has a laboratory and he doesn't give a shit about the exterior? Correct. Like, okay. a, like I said, uh, he doesn't... It doesn't look like he hires any type of outside help. Uh, there is a neglected garden that you can see in the front yard, um, but mainly in this building, uh, is anyone else's library modules weird? It's like four stories tall. It's skinny, but it is tall. Okay, I'm gonna try to check. Define weird. I can't look, see the normal modules I have open. Do you have any open? Oh. 
It seems like you probably just have to reopen them every time you load into the. Where did your character go? I restarted Pentagram to see if that is this. I don't know if it got happened because I got kicked out by Wintermute or something, and my internet, my computer was just very upset by that. I'm back in. Or should be. Yeah, on my player window, I had to reopen. I had to reload the module. Because okay. I didn't. They, it was open earlier. Now I guess I need to reload it. Okay. Which is weird, because it's not a new campaign file. Yeah, and it was literally earlier tonight they were all loaded correctly. That's why I'm kind of like, what the hell? Okay, then. Oh, you're a pain in the ass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. Okay, so as we're standing here, I'm gonna, because this is all looking rather creepy, I'm gonna go ahead, and uh, this is a new day, right? Yes. Okay, right, can you rest us? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Heightened Awareness on myself. And, uh, peer at the gate and see if anything stands out to me about the gate. Of the 21 on Perception, is there anything that strikes me as odd or unusual about the gate besides it just being a big iron gate? Uh, no, not at all. It's just a normal old gate. <laughs> Well, uh, and this is, I'm um, saying this to Poppy and Steph, I'd prefer to find something better than just break down the gate right now, but he doesn't exactly seem to be in a welcoming mood right now. Any ideas on what to do? I don't suppose there's some sort of method of communication or some shit between the gate and inside the infirmary. Uh, no. You'd actually have to go up to the door. And unfortunately, the dimension door scrolls we had were Dreamlands only, so I don't have one right now. I could just teleport us through. Well, you haven't tried to see if the gate is locked? Is there a trap on the gate that we've noticed? Uh, no. I walk up and poke the gate with my finger. Does it budge? Yeah, it could if you pushed hard enough. Alright, I try to push with my 7 strength. Am I able to make any progress? Uh, yes, it, it does open for you. Okay then, well, this does not really seem like a secure way of keeping people out, if he's so concerned about that. People can just walk up to the gate and open it. Well, how many people do you think want to walk up to the gate and open it? Well, you remember what uh, Ethan said about how he had to sleep behind bars because people were, like, trying to bother him and were upset at him. So, you know, angry mobs and stuff seemed like they'd be storming this place. Once in a while, yeah. 
So if you ha if you're putting up a giant wall and a gate to keep out an angry mob, having to just be able to be pushed open, uh, kind of seems to defeat the purpose. Okay then, well, we move in, and we look for a door, which presumably we find because on the map we're standing in front of it. Did we meet yourself going to meet? Uh, no. Okay, um... <clears throat> You see a dangling sign above this iron door, and... The iron door being the interior door, not the gate door, right? Correct. Um, okay. And the sign is being held in place by these three smiling angels, and... The sign reads, Give Sucker to the Troubled. And you see this great iron knocker hanging at the center of the door. Uh, I guess we knock first, right? And I'll wrap the knocker. Okay. Right after you knock, um, you start hearing that clicking noise and the sound of lapping water. And let's see if you all can hear this. Yes, we can hear that. Well, nobody's home, let's go. <laughs> so, we heard the rippling waters and the insect sounds, something about the lake's day it's here. I, I was uh, catching that. Yeah, I thought they, it was a good try on the sound. It's one of the new sound sets. And the blot quivers. The lake ripples. His stain is here. We split up and I go take a shower. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, you, you have that vision and right after, as the vision is fading away, uh, you're hearing the sound of a bell and it's ding 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 and then it just fades off and does the bell sound remind me of anything in particular with my experience and knowledge like uh, a ship's bell or a cathedral bell or uh, not in particular, other than it's just a, like a big bell. You know, probably something, um, maybe a church bell or a village square bell, something along that size. And is this something we are hearing inside of our minds, or something we are hearing from, like, the door? Uh, it's all in your mind. 
or I'll give the other two a look and say, so did any of you just hear something? Mm, I didn't hear anything if you didn't. <laughs> but yes, you all did hear something. <laughs> it's just comforting to know I'm not going insane by myself. <clears throat> Okay. Is there is there any response to the knocker? Uh, eventually, um, where This gentleman appears at the door. He's an ugly bud. Yes. And is those like terrible scars on the left hand side of his face? He looks like he got hit with an ugly spud. <laughs> uh, yes. Um. Those are scars, uh, he is quite, you know, I don't want to say deformed, but he is quite scarred. And, uh, you know, he comes to the door and says, Greetings! What can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, we'd heard some very impressive things about you. I thought we'd come and pay you a visit if you happen to have a few minutes. My friend here, and I gesture to Sith, is a upcoming young alchemist himself, and we've heard great tales of your exploits and discoveries. Oh. I am, it's true. Oh, uh, you're looking for <laughs> Mackie and Mun. Um, uh, I'm sorry to inform you, but he's currently busy with an experiment for the Navy and cannot be disturbed right now. I see. So when would a good time to come back be? Uh, come back tomorrow. I want to do a little sense motive there. With a 35, am I detecting that he's uh, being deceitful here, that things aren't as they seem? Um, yeah, you can tell, um, you can tell that he's hiding something. In general, what do I make of his statement that he's doing an experiment for the Navy? Do I have any read on that? Um, well, knowing that he's uh, in the shipbuilding, um, it, you know, you kind of would expect to hear something like that. And did we actually get, perhaps we didn't specify this, did Ethan say anything at all about what Manaki and Mun looked like? Um, you know, from the description, um, he would have gave you a rough description of the guy standing in front of you. So basically, either he's like a, a, some kind of clone, or he's been twisted to look like Mun, who's like a crazy alchemist, or this is Mun himself who's just lying to us. Like, and that would probably be one of those three things would seem to be likely then? Uh, very much. And with your perception role, um, 
you would have noticed that this is probably a clone. You're fairly confident that it is not the real mud. Hmm. I'm trying to give a sidelong look to Sith and Poppy and try to see whether they think we should press forward and try a different tack or come back tomorrow. Like raise an eyebrow towards them. Should should we think about maybe coming back like at night, middle of the night, sneak in, that sort of thing, or? I would say our two best options are probably harassing the clone or coming back in the morning or whenever coming back tomorrow. Let's try harassing the clone slightly then. So I'll say to him, you know, uh, sir, we're associates of Count Laos. Are you sure Mr. Munn is too busy at the moment? Man, why do you hate dogs so much? Sick as a dog, you threatening to shoot your dog. What is wrong with you? The damn dog is pissing me off. That's what's wrong with me. Wow. My wife my wife's trying to sleep because she has to go into work at midnight and the stupid dog bark, 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 bark. So I throw her out in the garage to and then scratch to get in, scratch to get out, scratch to get in. It's just that's why every time you see a BRB, it's because there's a dog related fucking thing won't just lay down and go to sleep like a normal beast. So, sorry about that. Anyway, so we're harassing the clone. What did we do to the clone? I said that we were associates of Count Lau's and asked if Mr. Munn was really too busy right now. And uh, so far we haven't heard anything back. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I am positive that he is too busy. Uh, I would recommend that you come back tomorrow. Is any particular time suit, Mr. Munn? Um, I do not know what his schedule will be tomorrow. You're welcome to try whenever you would like. I'll give a courteous nod and say we'll be here on the morrow then. Uh, have a good day, sir. And he shuts the door. What time is it right now, by the way? What time did we get into dock? Oh, let's say it's 12, 12 noon. Wow, so we got into port, went to the temple, did a bunch of shopping, and have done everything else, and it's only noon. We've had a busy day. Well, you got into the port early. <laughs> okay then. Man, glad we don't have any girls in the party because they'd be shopping for seven more hours, right? <laughs> so, uh, is just make a let's just leave for right now, and once we're out past the gate, I'll say, you know, right now, we don't know what Mun is up to, but I. Without further evidence or, inc you know, some reason to think that this, this time is pr particularly pressing right now, I'm hesitant to just start, like, kicking in the door. I'd suggest we come back tomorrow morning and see if they have any better luck, and if we're still stalled, then we look at forcing our way in if necessary. 
This guy apparently is an associate of Lyle's, and that's probably not a good thing overall. Should we maybe uh, observe the the facility at night, see kind of if anybody comes or goes, or or just come back tomorrow? I'll shrug and say, I mean, we can if you want, but my guess is we're not going to see anything except maybe some explosions and flashes from crazy alchemical experiments. But stake oh. out one would hurt, I suppose. So we're gonna stake it out? Uh, once it's actually nightfall. So in the meantime, we can go try to find the harbor master and see if there's any ship manifests and like passenger lists and such we might be able to look at. Okay, uh, you get back to the boat and Skywin is like, hey, I found out where he lives. Mr. Mun? Absolutely. He lives... Well, that's much appreciated, thank you. You mean you don't want to know where he lives? No, I do. I was just being very <laughs> thankful in advance. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she tells you and so forth. Um, I, not, I not eagerly, not really want to uh, sp you know, tell her that we already found it. <laughs> Probably a good move. Okay. Um, and I'll ask her if she's heard anything more about the man himself as we as she was asking about where he lives. Uh, just that he does a lot of work in the shipbuilding industry and is, you know, for the most part, uh, well respected amongst the builders. We did uh, manage to find your acquaintance, Ethan, as well, and we exchanged some ship tales, and he was quite happy to hear how admirably the, his ship had performed under such a sterling captain. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. Any suggestions on places that we should stay tonight? And what's your schedule like? When are you leaving? Uh, she's going to be in port for a couple of days. Y'all can stay on board ship if you'd like. Seems that wouldn't be a bad idea to me unless people object. I'm down on here. Okay. Okay, uh, and do you want to talk to the harbor master now? Yes. Um, normally he wouldn't let you, but since you gave him good reasons and, you know, a little bit of gold, uh, he allows you to look over the passenger manifest for the past few weeks. I was just going to tell him our, our, you know, our boss forgot some books and we were trying to catch up with him and give him his stuff and trying to figure out if he already left town yet. We'd been this way. Yeah. But that you, works too. You had to bribe him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you did not find any mention of Count Lyle's. Do we see any arrivals of how, how many arrivals of like few people who seemed to be having a, a large not, no amount of cargo because presumably if Laos is traveling he has no reason to think we're on his trail right now and he's planning for a big expedition he's probably going to be wealthier and I can I'd like to ask him as well and see you know if anyone happens to have seen a man who looks like Laos does Um, I mean, I imagine there may be a fair number of nobles arriving, but maybe that sticks out as something in the last, you know, week, few weeks.
Yeah. Um, just because you're not finding him on the passenger manifest doesn't necessarily mean that he's not. Um, and truly, you're not finding anyone that stands out as kind of suspicious. That I'll thank the harbor master for his time and slip him a few more gold or whatever and leave, I suppose. And I'll ask uh, Poppy and Sith if they have anything that they want to be doing the rest of today before we try to observe Mun's house overnight and see if anything seems to be going on there. Nope. Okay, during... Well... So Go ahead. We... If we have nothing better to do in the intervening hours, um, is it possible to go back to the sceptered house and see if we can find some of those esoteric knights of evolvement and find out and talk to some of those wonderful individuals, or is it better to just fast forward to the steakhouse? Uh, I'd fast forward. Okay. Uh, the majority of this book is. Uh, quick. <laughs> not a whole lot of detail, not a whole lot of subplot, just, you know, in and out. Okay. Okay, uh, during the night, uh, you can see that there is activity inside the infirmary, but, um... You know, it's lights flickering, it's shadows. Uh, you really can't tell what's going on, and you see no one come and no one go. Well, that's too bad. I doubt he gets many visitors in a place like that. And the night passes without incident, unless you all want to do something. I well, say so we just show up the next morning at like 9 a.m. and knock again. And... Once again, this gentleman comes back to the door and says, Welcome, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Well, hello. Uh, I'd like to make a perception check here. With a 25, does this look like the same person we saw yesterday, or is there anything subtly different? Like, even the hairs that, you know, might look like they're, you know, shaved slightly differently if they, to indicate that it might be a person who looks very, very clone-like similar, but not actually the same person. Uh, from what you can tell, it is the same one. I'll say hello, we're here to see Mr. Moon for our discussion yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, he's currently working on an experiment for the Navy and can't be disturbed right now. Uh, might I suggest you check back tomorrow? Definitely going to do a sense motive on that. What do I make of his statement? Um, you know, he may be hiding something, but you don't know what it is. Do I sense that he's just giving a complete brush off, or is, might is he actually saying something could change tomorrow? I, uh, you think you're getting the brush off? Okay, I'm just going to start walking, try to walk past him through the door. How does he react? Uh, he blocks your path. 
where you cannot go through the door. All right, I start casting a spell. How does he react? Kick his ass, Balka. Kick his ass. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Um, as you're starting to cast the spell, you see him reach out and touch something on the doorway. Okay. And then I literally vanish in front of his eyes and go invisible for five rounds. Oh, you shit! No, you need to roll for fucking initiative. <laughs> oh, okay. Not just initiative, <laughs> fucking initiative. <laughs> I suppose all of us are rolling for initiative. And oh my god, now I gotta find the token and... I bet I could duck beneath his legs or something to get past. It's gonna have a hard time blocking someone invisible for that long. Uh, Unfortunately, unless he's trained in spellcraft, he has no idea what actual spell I'm casting. Okay. So, <laughs> Stuff. You're yes, up. Sir. You are up, sir. <laughs> okay, so is he still casting his spell, or? Uh, I mean, he started casting a spell and that kind of kicked everything off. So is, is yeah. Still doing that? And, uh, Eric has went invisible. Okay. Uh, is this okay, guy so in I the finished my tracker? spell and the guy pushed some button at the same time, so I just vanished. Yeah. And we're still standing outside the door. He yes. He tried to push his way past. But okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to hold my action until... I don't see the guy on the combat tracker. I'm just going to hold my action and see kind of how this plays out before I start blowing shit up or whatever. <laughs> and I'll hiss under my breath, keep it yeah. cool. I'll actually, actually, I will cast shield on myself. And by that you mean drink like a potion, basically. Well, uh, it's the only level one. I have like six or seven shield spells. Right, but it's effectively drinking a potion. So... Right, yeah, the extract. <laughs> so it's you can Monday. Put it on yourself. You need to try that again. Say what? Oh, oh, uh, hold on here. There we go. Okay, um, you hear this distinct click, and the angels that are holding up the sign start to spray acid. And who's it spraying acid on? Um, we are in a fifteen foot cone. Rat bastard. So is that basically just gonna hit me then? Have you met Winter Moon? Hello. Uh well I'm figuring I can oh, at least get, gonna get everybody. Yeah, I can get two of you at least. Maybe even three? <laughs> well, here's why I'm confused. So, that is the different diagrams, right? So if you're doing it, effectively, from, these, from where it starts, right? So if that's the door, like the door doesn't really line up with one of the squares, but the door 
it only goes one in the door, and then it hits three past that, but not at the very first one. So unless the spray's coming from inside the room to arc out. Well, we can go. Ah, so it's rigged to spray at an angle. How interesting. Well, I'm just thinking it's going <laughs> to come out of the... Where do you think it should come out? center of the I door? It was com I assumed it was coming out from right above the door, straight out from the door. That seemed to be what you, the indication you were saying, and spraying everyone in a cone in that area, but so maybe it's a it highly would, advanced magical trap. It would get two, correct? If it is not spraying straight out, sure. If it's decided to angle towards one direction, it could hit two. Otherwise, it just hits you. Yep. Uh, I'll take. I assumed it was starting in that square, going straight out. It would be my assumption if it's a default trigger trap. But uh, okay, make your uh, reflex save. Oh, we get a reflex save. That's good news. That's not the best news, though. <laughs> we'll have to make one too. I think it's Sith and myself. Okay. Yep. All right, bring it. Was it the reflex save? Yes, sir. I feel confident that that should be okay. Okay, for half damage, uh, you each take 13 points of acid. Okay. Okay, if that's how he wants to play it. We tried to be nice. I just want to go on record as saying we tried to be nice. <laughs> He's making us be dicks. And... Yeah. I'm actually going to put him in a square. And Poppy, you're up. Well, if he's going to Wouldn't he have make... to be one closer to be pushing the button and blocking my path? Oh, goody. That would put him in right in my line of fire without me having to move. <laughs> And I'll try to say, don't kill anyone yet. Well, in that case, I won't power attack. Is that a sound effect of yeah, something hitting? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a sound effect of something hitting. <laughs> This is some kind, this is apparently if it's a clone, it's a very tough clone. Uh, yep. I am going to show off my fantastic dance moves, even though no one can actually see them, which is the unfortunate part. So I am going to try to tumble through his square. Now, the catch is his, like, he has a CMD, which you know and I don't. Now I'm tumbling through his square, which adds 5 to the DC. However, because I'm invisible, he's also flat-footed, so however much dex he has, or if he has any dodge bonuses, that should be removed. So if you need like a minute to figure out whatever the hell that end result is, I don't know how much of that info you have right offhand, but... Mm 
Okay. Actually, I have an idea that I, I yeah, okay, I don't, I'm not quite sure how it'll handle it. It'd probably be better for you to figure it out. Okay, so you have the number, which is his normal CMD plus five minus dexterity and dodge bonuses, basically, right? Yes. Okay, so I have a 33 versus that number. Do I manage to tumble through his square? <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> Wow. You were really freaking close, though. <laughs> that is interesting. Okay. Hmm. One second. So this guy is has a very oh, high no. CMD, which is strange given that it's an alchemist, um, which probably basically means either he's out leveling us by like five plus levels or something. Actually, Eric, I looked at the wrong line. You did make it. Okay. I was like, as if a 33 didn't beat that, then holy shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I looked down one line and subtracted four instead of five. <laughs> gotcha. Of course, I don't know if, it, if this would make much of a difference, but it's also entirely possible that the clone would not be an alchemist. True, but even something like a Vrock Demon, which is a CR9 enemy, for example, right, and has reasonable dex and strength and has high base attack, only has a CMD of 27, then he'd be flat-footed to 25, so he'd have a DC of 30 to get past. So, okay. like, and that's somebody with full VAB and a powerful demon. Okay, so I managed to tumble through then, apparently. And uh, I'd like to try the door over there. Is it unlocked? Uh, top or bottom? Bottom. I thought there was an arrow there. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> Sorry, it kind of blends in on the map. Uh, no, that door is not locked. Okay, so I try to push it open. What happens? Uh, you manage to push the door open, and it reveals a, a small library. Is that unoccupied? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so tumbling through him and pushing open the door, what has that required of the round so far? How, what actions has that required? Uh, yeah, that's uh, taking your movement and probably your standard as well. All right, so movement to move in. The, so we're saying it's a standard action to open a door every single time. Um, what do we normally count it as? There is no normal count it as. It's up to the GM. Um, that's why I'm having to ask. Yeah, I'll let you have it. What do you mean? Uh, no, it would not be a standard action. Okay. So, it's, since I didn't move my full movement, it's considered part of my movement, basically, then? Yeah, we'll consider it part of your movement. Okay. Then, with my second move action, I'm just going to... I'm invisible, so I don't actually need to be doing acrobatics at this point, since unless... Does it look like he can see me somehow? Does his eyes seem to be tracking me perfectly or something? Uh, 
Uh, no. Okay. Uh, he's still looking down toward the door that you opened. <laughs> Alright, I want to try to push the next door open up here to the north. Does that succeed? Uh, yes, it does succeed, and you see a lounge. There's chairs and bookcases and... But no people. And I'll just say, you know, out loud and common to uh, the guy who's busy pushing the button, like, you realize I'm already past you, right? And see how he reacts. All right, Seth. Okay, so he just splashed, splashed me with acid for no good reason, which I think is kind of crap. Um, and now I've got to figure out what to do with them. I don't think we're trying to just kill them, but... The, the key two words being not yet there. Yeah. Because in all fairness, like, if this guy is used to, like, angry villagers coming to his house and trying to storm the place or something. At the same time, the acid damage we just took, we took 13 acid damage on a successful save. That means it was, like, 26 on an unsuccessful save. That means it's going to kill, like, 90% of the population, that trap right there. Yeah, it did seem kind of overkill. Yeah, th that's not like, hey, I'm going to splash some <laughs> acid on you to say, hey, go away. That's like, you're all fucking dead. So that actually has me more annoyed than anything else. The fact that that acid death trap was so powerful that it would have killed... Like, if I was just a random like uh, commoner who wanted, who wanted to get past and then was a bit like overzealous and stupid and tried to push his way past, right? Like, I'd be dead right now. That's, so, And the fact that he was willing to kill someone over that... That and, is annoying. And we've established that this is just the clone, right? Yeah, so the, mo the more I think about this, the more I'm getting pissed off about it. <laughs> Wait, are you, you're getting pissed off that this dude is trying to defend his property or his master's property? For using lethal force without adequate provocation. You tried to force your way past him. Sure. I, in, the US, in the United yeah. States, if you walk up to somebody's home and they answer the door and you try to push past them, they're not they're not authorized to shoot you dead for that. That depends on the state, actually. No, in any state, unless you have, you actually have to have like a weapon yourself or present some kind of like threat in that sense. You're just trying to walk past is not justification for lethal force. Well, I mean, I haven't read the thing about castle laws in a while, so I don't really like. Well, the know idea is that you can shoot them dead if they're attacking you, but. If they're if they're unarmed and not like trying to attack you in the first place and just trying to push past, you can call the police. You could try to shove them back, but using well, the it, it, riddling their body with bullets for that that's not it, gonna fly. It, it depends on the situation. If it's a seventy year old woman in a wheelchair being shoved past by a six foot three guy on meth and she shoots him, no jury in the country is gonna convict her. Sure. You know, if you got little kids in medieval behind fantasy yourself. land, I don't, I don't think the, the government is gonna frown upon lethal force against defending <laughs> your shit. So. So. Uh, uh, sure. Especially if people alive. are trying to rile up an angry mob to presumably kill this poor yeah. bastard. So I guess. Uh, well, unfortunately, Poppy's been doing lethal damage so far, and because of that, if you do too much damage with your bombs, you could kill them. It would have been better if Poppy had done non-lethal damage. Yeah, that's the thing. Buffer. So, do I just hold my action and get sprayed with acid again? Or, of course, that was a trap. It wasn't he. You right. could he also didn't... just move back a, a few steps first. Like yeah. If, I, well... if you. If you, uh, like, you could, for example, you could go total defense and just move back, like, 15, 10 feet, 10 feet or something. Well, you know, I'm just going to take a five-foot step back. I um, think there's a wall there, isn't there? Is, is there a wall there? Or? No. I don't. No, I you can move. a wall. I think that's just, like, the upper level map intersection thing. Uh, well, it, okay. he's not holding an actual weapon, right? 
No. So, unless he's a monk, he doesn't threaten. So I might even go 10 feet. I'll go to there. Split so, in the difference there, I see. And then I'll hold the... Oh, is that a... There we go. So I'll move back 10, 15 feet and, and then... Uh, and pull. pretend he's not standing in a room. <laughs> yeah, and pretend I'm not standing in a room. <laughs> and we'll see what he does. And at the same time, I'll be protesting, hey, hey, we're... Nothing here calls for you to try to kill us. Of course, Poppy just laughed for just 15. Of course, Poppy just him twice, which doesn't help in our cause here. I was just sneaking past. And well, I only nailed him after he used lethal force. <laughs> this is true. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pull out my bow, actually, for my standard action. And Poppy, uh, he's uh, probably upset with you. Good, let him be upset. And he tries to slam into you. That uh, doesn't Good make it. That. But, you know, he's quick on his feet, and he's going to try again. <laughs> he ones in a row. Now, keep in mind that also means he apparently has multiple attacks at plus 23, which is pretty damn high, so... <laughs> Ah, shit. This guy is in, like, fire giant level of power, basically. So, that's pretty serious. More than fire giant level of power. They only have, like, plus 20 slams. And Poppy... That didn't happen the first time. So, did he do anything that would indicate that some kind of magic happened to him in that round? Let's see... Yeah, the first time he took full damage. Watching magic, cold iron. I mean, it look you know from a fantasy grounds perspective, it looks like he got temporary hit points from something, but did he do? Yes, anything he or... did get. Uh, he did rage, which gave him temporary hit points. Okay, so he got like he, okay, so he actually looks like he's throwing himself into a, a fury here. Correct. Okay. Got ourselves a barbarian, boys. Told you he wasn't an alchemist. <laughs> barbarian clone. So maybe try to, if, especially if he's like shit AC from raging, maybe try to smack him at least once with some non lethal damage. Boy, when did raging cause temporary hit points that show up as absorbing the damage? This is new. And uh, that's how Unchained Barbarians do it. As a way, inst instead of having to actually increase your actual hit points, they just give you temporary hit points. So you don't have to keep recalculating the character sheet. Oh, yeah. I actually have a physical copy of that book, I just haven't used it. I have that house rule in my campaigns as well, where just even normal Barbarians... Any, any, temp any temporary con bonus just gives you temporary hit points. So... Except it kind of seems like a non-issue with Fantasy Grounds, because it just automatically calculates everything for you anyway. What do you mean? It's like, other than the 
pain in the ass setting up the rage power. Like, if you activate the rage thing, then it just give you whatever it gives you. Like, you don't have to figure, you don't have to re manually recalculate everything every time. You'd have to manually recalculate your own hit points. So if you raged right now, or you drank a bear's endurance, you'd have to say, well, I have 10x... Right now it'd be like 20 extra hit points from the bear's endurance, and 30 from the rage if it's like the mighty rage. You'd have to figure that out, and if you had like a mixed match of different hit die classes or something, it could be weird numbers. And every level the end amount added would change. Alright, well then, clearly I haven't been raging properly ever, because <laughs> I've never bothered figuring out hit point recalculations. Well, part of the reason for that is if you, let's say you gain 30 hit points from rage, and then your rage ends when you're at 1 hit points, you drop to negative 29 hit points and probably instantly die. That's one of the other things that this was meant to change by giving temporary hit points instead. Mm. Anyway, I'd suggest you try to smack him at least once or twice with non-lethal damage so we have a buffer. Uh... I don't have a thing for non-lethal damage for my hammer. There you go. Uh, just some... Tw cool, thank you. Yeah, 26 still hits, so... Well, he got a shit ton of temporary hit points now, didn't he? Oh, wait. No, this was resist- Oh, he's resistant to non-lethal damage, isn't he? Uh, yes he is. <laughs> well, that was a waste of my fucking second attack, thanks. Uh, so, I didn't notice anything about him that indicated he's not a normal person, or I'm confused? Um, anything that... Here, go ahead and make another attack like you normally would. Um, like the whole attack or just the damage roll? Uh, just the damage. So not a so lethal damage this time? <clears throat> Should I switch it back to lethal? What the hell? I I have an effect on me for non-lethal damage if he's immune oh. to. Okay, he's back to lethal damage. Okay. Yes. That that has removed his temporary hit points. <laughs> So, looking at Poppy's efforts here, um, rolling whatever knowledge or perception or spellcraft or whatever that you want me to roll, can I figure out wh what is exactly special about this guy that is, because he's clearly, I thought he was effectively like a clone and thus would be like a normal human except a uh, clone. He is a construct. And, um,. There's a faint chemical smell lingering from the creature's skin, and um, other than that, there's small, almost imperceptible flaws that you can see occasionally. Well, knowing he's a robot yesterday would have probably changed how we dealt with that, but whatever, we're here. Um... With my knowledge of constructs, is there any way to disable them without destroying them? Because as soon as they hit like zero hit points, I think, yeah, as soon as they hit zero hit points, they're just destroyed. So, is there any way to break them in a manner that doesn't permanently destroy them? There's a spell for it, but I don't imagine anyone has. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have any anti-construct specific spells. Uh, yeah, there's not any way that I see. So basically, we should just destroy it. Call it good. Okay, so I'm going to say new plan: destroy it. <laughs> 
Okay. As I realize it's suddenly a robot that actually, you know, can be destroyed without killing somebody. Um, so that's a, a new thing right now. Well... <clears throat> There is what it technically is. Nice. By nice, I mean. Hang on. Ew. The CR 10 has 15 base attack bonus. The fuck? <laughs> It's not so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's I, only I, plus no, I, 22. I didn't actually isn't? tumble past him. I, his CMD flat-footed would have been 32, and then it had been 32 plus 5 is 37. So I, I didn't actually make it past him. Isn't that what you rolled, a 37? I, I got a 33. Oh. This thing has yeah. fucking insane CMD. And it's because it has 15 attack... Like, a level 15 fighter, would it be a CR 14 or 15? That has BAB-15. This thing has BAB-15 while a CR-10. Like, I don't know how the fuck that, like, makes any <laughs> sense, but... But it's a level 50... It, it's a level 15 per character that is only considered a level 10 enemy, basically. Um... Ooh. We've got it out number two and a half to one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Raging, they're complex creations designed to... Try for a variety of purposes, bound by physical similarity. They have a spark of intelligence, life, the essence of its traitor. It's a little more than a shallow. Sometimes a one can blah blah blah. They're prone to madness. Yeah, Mun has had to mutilate and sacrifice part of himself in order to create this hollow one. That's gross. Yeah, it took months of uh, self-mutilation. Well, that's lovely. And it's a construct. But it is intelligent. Like, apparently it does have intelligence. More than just pure automaton. But I'm guessing even if we beat it to within an inch of its life and said, let us pass or we'll destroy you, it would probably still fight us. Yes. The construct. <clears throat> it would. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way. Like I'm guessing, Mun, like I'm guessing, I'm way overthinking of this, and Mun is somebody creepy we should be happily beating up on especially from the sounds of this. But at the same time, if we're trying to potentially get something from him, it would be nice to not destroy something that's months of his work. Especially if he had to sacrifice part of himself to do it. <laughs> Good point. Uh, guys, i got to run to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay, so we can't knock it unconscious. Its CMD is fucking insane, so there's no way we're going to, like, grapple it and be able to tie it up or something. Um, its CMB, by the way, is fucking insane, so we're not going to be able to do that either. Sometimes you just gotta blow shit up. Maybe so. Maybe the next... Uh, automaton will be more compliant. So normally, a, a normally a um, a combatant array. So we're talking about something that's meant to be powerful in combat, right? Which this would cover. 
Normally a CR-10 has a CMD of about 29. This has eight higher. He's an overachiever. All right. Also, it usually attacks twice at 18. This is attacking at plus 24 during the rage. Sorry, nice. plus 23 during the rage. This thing is really freaking strong for its CR. Um, but it's beat. The problem is right now is not that whether we can beat it because we can beat it. The problem is we're trying to figure out if there's a way not to just destroy it. I would go with no. Not without it. Not without a dedicated caster. So next question is: Do we destroy it, or do we? I mean, I can, especially if he like chases you down, Poppy. I can get back out. We could always, you know, run away and then either a use invisibility to try to get past later on, or b come back with a spell to specifically disable it, or c we just say fuck it and destroy it. Oh, just fuck it. Like that little voice in the background. Oh, just destroy it. <laughs> is, is that you being an evil GM, or is that you saying, please don't drag this out for something that shouldn't be dragged out? Uh, I, I'm not saying either way. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a GM saying the equivalent of Don, come down and take you off. <laughs> How fast is this sucker? It's 30 feet, so. I mean, this, did you prepare all of your spell slots, Sith, today? Because isn't the thing to disable it one of your alchemist spells? To disable it? Disable construct? Uh, no, I do not have that spell. I don't even think that's an option. It's from the advanced class guide, apparently. That's alchemist oh, well, three. It's it. It wasn't on my to-do list, so. <laughs> but yeah. I can. I can summon the hell out of a nature's ally if you need it, but I can't do anything with this guy. <laughs> or I could fly around it if, you, if anybody needs something to fly, let me know. <laughs> okay, so I can make people invisible. That doesn't really help right here unless we can all get past it. I have a bunch of investigation options. I have damage buffs and combat buffs for freedom of movement, the ability to have two performances at once. Shit tons of knowledge, but I don't think there's any way that I can think of right now that involves the, the, something besides destroying this thing. Anyone else have any idea or of what might be done, or do, are you guys <clears throat> just tired of thinking about this and say just destroy it? You let Poppy drag it outside. Sith will sneak in, and Poppy takes a beating. <laughs> Oh, you might you might actually team. kill me with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up, Poppy. We're almost done. Just a second. Oh look, I'm making a sandwich. Just a sec, Poppy. He <laughs> got your mayonnaise. <laughs> you know, as much as the joke is that it was intended to be, that might not actually be a bad idea. Well, here's my question. If I, if we go with that, can you guys act out of initiative? I'm not sure we'd even necessarily want to. Well, what exactly do you think you're going to do? Explore the whole fucking house while I'm fighting this thing? Well, if I give you haste, you have a full minute of that. If, you're, if, it, if it is willing to follow you out, you might be able to get past it, so yes, we might be able to get ahead of it and just run through the house. Because we'll be twice its speed. Okay. I'm gonna throw that tricycle at your head. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> Let's try well, I was going to say this. bicycle, but you're too short. You wouldn't be able to reach the pedals. <laughs> um. <laughs> the problem is that this, uh, this 
thing is actually a reason. Basically, this thing is better at sensing motive than Poppy. So if I try to like make a, a mock comment towards Poppy that is Poppy knows isn't real, but the thing, you know, is too dumb to realize, it's probably more likely to realize that I'm trying to fool it than Poppy is. So. I'll just, you know, shout out, just keep it busy, Poppy, and I'm going to cast haste on everybody. And uh, hope that Sith, you know, decides to, like, pop an invisibility thing and get past. And Poppy's able to, like, total defense enough or just, or even just keep, like, withdrawing enough to make the thing only get, like, one attack per turn and give and buy us time. And then in the meantime, as my move action for the round, I'm going to move over there and try to push open the door. So I'm supposed to, to he's going to chase Poppy, and then I'm going to try to sneak in and... Uh, you have, I'm assuming you have some invisibility stuff as an alchemist, right? Oh yeah, I, I can turn myself uh, invisible, yeah, that's all. Yeah, I'm I would just do that, like turn yourself invisible and then get in here. And let Bobby leave the thing for a mer Poppy leave the leave the thing for Mary Chase for right now. <laughs> the Poppy just like does a withdraw action every round. Then it has to only do one attack per round chasing her. So even if it hits, you know she can take a hell of a lot of hits, especially with the like the DR she has. Now the the catch for this is we don't actually have a big bag for <laughs> it to chase Poppy around on. Oh, we'll make do. I could just run circles around the building. You could, and as long as Sith gets in first, it'll probably work. And if it stops chasing you, then that's actually not a bad thing, because Sith and I are inside. So on my turn, I'm going to cast Invisible, and then hold my action. Until... I would hold your action? Well, the problem is that... Right now, the problem is that uh, the thing is going to attack Poppy again before Poppy is able to move away. Okay, so I will hold my action until basically... Well, shit, I don't even know when I'll hold my action until. Here's a question. If Sith was to, like, move over to there in his turn and quickly assemble, like, a bark skin extract... Could Poppy then take that bark skin or shield extract from him as like a move action and then drink it as a standard action on Poppy's turn? I'm sorry, one more time? If Sif spins a move action to move over there, then he uses his alchemist ability as a standard action to basically con you know, mix an extract really quickly. Poppy, do you have any natural armor right now? Do you have an amulet uh, or natural armor? I think I have an amulet of natural armor. But you do not have a shield, right? So probably shield would be better here, and you have a bunch prepared, right, Sith? Yeah, I have, uh, like, five shield spells ready. Where so can Sith, like, move over to there, hand, like, hold out a hand, basically, and try to... And, like, basically, can Sith move over there ready in action to give Poppy a shield potion, which Poppy then takes on her turn, and then Poppy is able to then drink that as a standard action after using a move action to grab it and thus gain the shield effect. Is that workable? Yes. Okay, so that's something you could do this turn and as you tr as we try to move Mun away. Okay. So I move over to there. And I get my shield ready. He's still gonna nail me to the wall before I can take and drink this thing. Alright, let's find out. Okay, Eric, as you open the door, you notice this large room has an odd opening in the center of the floor. There's a series of handrails around it. Uh, you can see that the chamber is filled with books and intri intriguing objects of a medical nature. Uh, you can see someone is coming down the stairs. Okay. And can, I, look, can I make a perception check and try to, based on that stimuli, to try to figure out if it sounds like another one of these constructs or something else? Uh, yes, it does. All right. Okay. Looks better than one killer robot. 
And, robots. and the more this happens, the more I think we're going to have to probably start just destroying them. Oh, I got a hit in on Poppy. Sorry, Pop. Has some damage and... Oh, got another hit. Oof. And Poppy. That's so... Fine. A question. So I, I moved to there and I, I, ripped up this extract. When do I give it to Poppy? Did I give it to him on my turn, like at the end of my turn? Or does he get it now, or did I wait a turn? Or... What I assumed you were doing is you were literally writing an action as a standard action to give it to Poppy. So then Poppy then takes it from you, which adjusts just your initiative need to be just above Poppy. So well. Uh, it's it's just like casting a spell. So I could, I can, I can make up the extract and just hand it to him on my turn. He would have it now, and then it's just a is it a standard the action is that or you move can action? Try to hand it to Poppy, but how is Poppy going to grab it when it's not Poppy's turn? That's the problem. So at the end of my turn, I throw it in the air, and it's <laughs> halfway and it just, there. It on my style turn. time thing. And then the first and I just half got of fucking his turn. Knocked upside the head. I don't think trying to catch a flying potion is gonna be like at the top <laughs> I, of my list. I think list you should just here. be ready to give Poppy, it to Poppy. Work with Poppy me, man. Work it. with me. Trying to help you out. You're, you're, you're kind of killing me. Okay, so, so when does Poppy get this potion? Do I, I get it, I get it now? now? I get it right now. Okay. And, and Poppy's so, probably going to five foot step back as well, so he can grab it and drink it safely. So now you should have shield on him. There you go. Oh boy. And I'm guessing that's the entirety of my turn. Probably move action to grab it, to draw it, and then a standard to drink it, so yeah. Okay, so I have 60 feet of movement right now for a single move action. I am done invisible. Um, how close does that next robot sound like it is? Uh... It will. Uh, it's going to enter the combat tracker when you're done. Okay, oh, so oh hey, real quick. Uh, Poppy was hasted, so doesn't he get another action? Nope, only an extra attack on a full attack. Oh, okay, never mind. So much for that doing any good. Okay, so like, if if I move, if I move like over to there, do I see it coming down the stairs or something? Like, where? At what point do I notice it to actually see it? Uh, yeah, when you're at the bottom of the stairs. So if I take, if I, as soon as I move five feet there, I see it coming down the stairs, it looks like it's another one of these things. And I'm confident upon looking at it at the imperfections that it is definitely another one of these yes. one things. Okay, so then that's five feet of movement. Then... I'm going to come back over to here and call out new plan, too many of them to go solve this peacefully, just need to kill them. And I'm going to say that in a very, very inspirational way. I for one am damn excited. This guy doesn't even have a name. He's like, he's like the the red shirted guy on Star Trek. The the plus Those one. Those have more personality. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. What was the one on uh, uh, Galaxy Quest? The where the guy's like, man, I'm just an extra. I don't even have a name. <laughs> That's right. So I'm I would make sure, by the way, you get out of range of a five foot step for this guy. Yeah. Which, I mean, you can do with a five foot step yourself, but. Uh -huh. 
I want to be 20 feet away from him. I have a question. Is this map unmasking itself? There we go. No. No, he's unmasking it <laughs> so I can run wild in this room. Why? So, so why I'm not just leave it masked and have him just run around, run around, blah, run along the red masking? I don't know. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna. Don't be difficult, yeah. Poppy. <laughs> yeah. Why you gotta make this weird? So I will throw an extra bomb, and I'll mess this guy up, or I'll try to anyway. So that lets me. I'm hasted. I can throw four bombs. Three at normal, and one at minus five, but they're all at minus two, so. Okay, so you got hit four times. Oh, I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, but you're not very happy. Okay, we're going well, to... <laughs> so that was a 5 and a 9. Is that... Was that all 4? Should have been 4 D6 total. Yeah, that's actually the average of 4 D6 is 14. Oh, okay. All right. So... Another one. That's awesome. Yeah, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so what this uh, new hollow one showing up? Technically speaking, he can full attack on a five foot step. Thanks. <laughs> See, it's okay. <laughs> he missed anyway. Uh, what I was going to say was with this new hollow one showing up, are we still going with the plan of me leading this one? No, that's why I was shouted as I came back that there's more coming. New plan, just kill them. No peaceful way now. Okay. In the D&D &D world, we call this old school. You just wipe out everything that's, like, in the way. Bah, I got a mess. Doesn't matter. Awesome. I am going to uh, delay my turn. Actually, you know what? That doesn't really make a width of difference because the thing's going to run past me and there's only one action anyway. I'm going to cast Heroism on myself. Okay, and I am still maintaining the Bardic performance. And I'll even take a little five foot step down there. You want to take an opportunity? Nope. That's five, ten. Nice try. He didn't fall for it. I 
33 fucking missed. <laughs> it's that shield spell, man. It is a shield spell. Man, we gotta use that more often. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, and you can have Bark Skin on top of that. I don't know if you have a plus one or plus two amulet, but you can probably add another two or three AC on top of what you currently have. Oh, every that first one just would have one. been a 32, but it hit. Or 31, but I assume that hits. Yeah. My guess is that with a roll of 19 base, it kind of doesn't matter what your modifier is, because I doubt the thing has more than like 20 touch AC. Most things don't. I don't have more than 20 touch AC, and I'm a dex character. Well, wow, that was so close to being a one shot. Uh, you don't have point blank shot on, by the way. Oh, I don't? Nope. Well, he was probably supposed to. Yep. Oh, well. I guess if you're feeling frisky, you could add four more points of damage. I don't think Wurtzmute really wants to do that. Nah, not at all. There, now I got Point Blake shot on. Is it just me, or does this one seem like he has a lot more hit points than the last one did? No. I mean, the last one had a lot of hit points, too. No, oh, okay. Five foot step to there, full attack. Well, I don't know, courage. the, the, one, the well. one that we had killed was actually on the combat tracker as Mun, so... Who knows? I don't think we killed the clone, I think we killed the real guy. Mother. Well, except he didn't go to the dying stage, just dropped dead. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, sorry, Witch, dude. I see your pain, man. Hmm. As a DM, you get attached to these little guys. <laughs> yep, that you do. Okay. So there are now two constructs outside. <laughs> well, this isn't the way I was hoping it would go. I didn't realize that it was a robot somehow until I was already past it. These things happen, I guess. Or else we probably would have tried to approach that differently, but at this point we kinda I feel like we just need to go for it. You're slipping, man. Uh, you know what? I just got over being depressed, okay? I'm trying to be an optimist now, and trying to think that we can solve this, you know, peacefully. All I was trying to do is basically just slip past him and say, ha ha, I got past you, and what are you going to do about it now? And I didn't expect his answer to be, let's try to kill all of you with an acid trap. <laughs> <laughs> I play a little prank, a harmless practical joke, and this is what happens. Bah. And I will use a wand of cheer light winds to top us off before we continue. Well, do you really care about the last four hit points right now, Sith? No, I'm okay. Okay, so one thing we may want to consider, by the way, is right now I have a wand with 12 cure moderate wounds. 40 Cure Light Wounds. I do have a Break Enchantment Wand, a Magic Missile Wand, and a Wand of Invisibility. With oh, The Wand with Invisibility only has 7 charges, though. But we may want to look into doing some group purchases of something like a Wand of Lesser Restoration and another Wand or two of Cure Light Wounds. Just going forward, something to consider before we leave town. Okay. So in the meantime, since it looks like we're having to get into some fights here, 
Um, and just on the safe side, since this lasts for an hour and 40 minutes anyway, I'm going to cast your wisdom on Sith and Poppy. And then just for good measure, I'm going to cast tongues on myself as well, because shit could get weird in here. I feel heroic already. That's it, my slave. Feel brave. Wait, did I say that part out loud? A heroism was literally a compulsion mind-affecting spell that can't be resisted <laughs> with the will save. Does that mean if a paladin is immune to compulsions, does that mean that they're immune to heroism spells? Nah. Isn't it kind of a voluntary thing? I suppose. Like, okay, like, assuming there's no more killer robots coming down the stairs to say hi, I um, want to take a look down in this gap. You said this is like a basement, basically? Um. Yes, it is. Um. Uh, when you look down the hole, uh, you're actually seeing a surgery room down below. Up top is, uh, the viewing area for training, you know, other doctors and surgeons. Oh god, this is apparently what I know about how these things are made. I'm really liking this less and less as we go. <laughs> So yes, uh, <clears throat> you, uh, it's an overlook for you know surgery and training and whatnot. Sorry, I was too busy having a brief nightmare over that. The image portrayed by that. What what about the thing down there? The surgery table. And this guy voluntarily had this done to himself. Or did it to himself? Yes. I feel like the latter would be physically impossible. Well, who else is going to create it? Remember, it says the creator has to make the, the person creating the construct has to do this check. So, surgery table down below. What else do we see? Sorry, this thing is fucking crazy. <laughs> um. There is also a, um, you have bookshelves with medical books, um, medical instruments, um, there's a wine crate that contains some wine, um, And a few other items here and there about the room. You have a stairwell going up. And a closed door in the southwestern section. Okay, so looking back through that room... And then also down in that room, the study. Is there anything of note that I see in there that stands out? And presumably Poppy and Sith are in here looking around too, with especially Sith with his alchemical expertise, seeing if anything stands out to him. Uh, are you searching or just passing? 
Right now, I figure we're just basically doing a, spending like less than a minute per room, just check, you know, looking it over, doing a, a quick search, but not an exhaustive search, right? We're not looking inside necessarily the books unless the title piques our interest. Um. So basically, whatever we can uncover within a minute of, insta of searching each room. Okay, uh, the lounge, which is uh, the top room there, um, it, it's got some oddities in it, uh, alchemical nature, uh, some of them are medical. Um, it's got an overstuffed bookcase. Um, There's several things that are probably worth coming back to examine in closer detail. Um, the one at the bottom is a uh, small library. Uh, there's a lot of old maps hanging on the wall. And there's a decanter half full of red liquid and a leather case uh, laying on the table. Is the liquid blood? Uh, it doesn't look that way. Okay. So as they're looking through this, I'll say, you know, the things do point hard out that look like they're worth looking through more, I'll say, Hey, you know, I'm seeing some stuff that we probably want to look at more closely, but I think right now we probably want to try to move more quickly given our method of entry here. Any disagreement? Nope. Alright, so we'll also check this room down to the southwest and note, make a mental notes of the things we saw earlier that we want to investigate more in detail once we're, you know, more certain we have the time to do so. Okay, um, when you open the door to the smaller room, um, you see a velvet and mahogany line this chamber, and you see this brass chain and pulley. Um, you can see some mold starting to grow along the wall uh, on parts of the velvet wall covering and this room is actually an elevator gee I wonder where it could wait an elevator yep it's not stupid it's advanced <laughs> Well, I don't know about you guys, but given that he has, like, anti-intruder acid sprays at the front, I don't want to get into potentially, like, a death trap elevator here. I'd rather take the stairs. I feel like the stairs probably go up, not down. Wait, does this go down or up? Um... Okay, it does go down. A five. Okay, it goes down. Okay, well. I still say we check the upper floors first, unless people have objections. Nope. No objection here. Okay. And... Okay. So let's go up the stairs then. Uh, 
thumbs to area A10 above. Okay, and throw everybody in a square. Okay, as you come up the stairs, um, you enter this large room that has, um, you see a lot of bookcases with various books and folders. Uh, there's some bizarre curios. Um, you see a sturdy wooden desk, a stuffed leather chair, and a small table in one corner of the room that holds a a stuffed monkey that's been posed to make it look like it's playing a tiny violin and there are all these unnerving paintings covering the wood paneled walls What kind of paintings were those? Unnerving. <laughs> Unnerving. Oh, okay. Um, Dare I ask what that means? They are... That means you don't want to know. Um, some of them are anatomical drawings. Uh, other ones are like... Um, pictures of a city, a picture of dancers, um, yeah, and anatomical drawings and so forth. Normal shit that you would expect in a mad scientist. And a monkey playing the violin. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, anything... I'd say anything alive, but given we're just dealing with constructs, is there anything that looks like it could be any kind of hostile creature or even entity whatsoever that may potentially exist on this region of the map? Is that, <laughs> is that broad enough? <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on just a minute. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, sitting behind the desk is yet another hollow one. Love these guys. And you need to roll for initiative because as soon as you hit, hit the top of the stairs, he let out a roar and stood up been and is around for a few minutes, right? I'm sorry. We've been moving around for a few minutes here, right? Yes. Okay, so haste is going to be worn off. Shield is probably at like what two thirds duration at this point, maybe something like that. Yeah. Okay. Or move.
removed haste from everybody. Uh, I need to remove inspire courage. I thought I did that earlier. Okay. Are you ready? What happens if we say no? Nah, uh, it's gonna happen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. And he tries to slam into Eric and misses. Eric, you are up. Alright, I am going to start inspiring people. And since there just seems to be one of them right now, I'm going to take a five foot step there. And I don't think we can really set up a flanking bonus, so oh well. And I'm going to stab out at this guy. Which easily is. And Poppy. Hasted at the moment? Nope. Heh 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 heh. And I would Sith point out that you may want to hold back on the bombs, at least for now. Because I don't know how many you have left, but if there's more packs of these things, I don't think it's worth wasting a bunch on just one. Yeah. Right. Um, so I can't move along. Uh, like the, the square I'm in, that just goes stairs down. I have to like move through Poppy Square to get out into the room. Yes. And acrobatics versus their CMD, right? Yeah, don't try to tumble past this guy. And he's got a, a CMD like a thousand, so. Yeah, so I, I guess would I'll just, just like move to there, I guess. Basically, then, yeah. I'll use my bow and arrow, but I don't know how good it'll be. Does he have uh, partial concealment or whatever? No. You're good. Okay, so it's just a regular attack. Okay. There you go. Bow actions. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, Combos at longbow. Should have 38 and 25. I forgot to select him. So I hit him once. Uh, Ten points of damage. Oh, is it my go? Huh. Apparently, yes. He says with great excitement. I'll take the one. And, and. But wait, there's more. Shit, nope. And, and. Next time. <laughs> okay. I'm going to 
take a five foot step down there and flank the thing and attack it. And I'm trying to save my haste and I'd rather burn a few wand charges for like 15 gold each right now to heal this than an entire haste, so. Flanking. Full attack. Oh, that sucked. Oh, and I am maintaining the bard song, so I need to mark that off too. So that's 27, 50, 60, 77, 81 damage so far to it. No, 91 damage so far to it, and it's still wounded. Uh, that's rough. Um, okay, so I'll shoot at it with the bow again, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Damn it! But I hit it. I did hit it twice, though, right? Yeah. Yes. You do a point blank shot on, right? Yes. Yes. So, take that, motherfucker! Seems awfully strong for a hollow one. <laughs> Just saying. And for a walking skin rag, these things sure can take a beating. And he's gonna take a five foot step. I will take a five foot step as well. I am not flanking, but Poppy will be. If I can roll better than a two and a seven, may not matter. Show off. Uh. Uh, if I had rolled the other way around, I bet I would have hit it twice, but I didn't. Okay. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. You know what? He's so close. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, uh, rapid shot. And I'll do three, three shots on him. And I hit him twice. Well, that's a good You got oh, it. Oh, boom! Take that, Piatch. <laughs> uh oh. When the GM laughs, it's already too late. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you... I was expecting, waiting for more of a depressed noise out of him. Okay. Well, you have defeated the Hollow One, and what would you like to do now? Look around the room. So you said there's like bookcases on either side and a desk that the thing was sitting at. Yes. Okay. Uh, if we peruse it, you know, again, spending like maybe a minute or two searching right now, nothing more. 
you know, looking through the books quickly and looking around the desks, uh, is there anything in particular we notice? 36 perception, looking around. Um... You notice that a lot of the books are probably worth some money. Um, and you do find a safe in the room. Okay. And... And, you know, just the odd variety of paintings throughout the room. Do you want to spend time studying the paintings or continue? kind of think that again we just push forward for now and take our time to explore this place once it's a bit calmer. Any objections? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, I will say, I say, suggest to shoot the Sith that, uh, do you have any of those bark skin extracts no, handy? No, I don't have any bark skin. I only have shield. I'm, I'm waiting for the next time I get a select a first level spell slot to get bark skin. You didn't learn any spells when we are in town you can copy spells I well we hadn't got to that we talked about that last time but then this time we went right into we're at the old infirmary so uh, I assumed and once you can correct me if I'm wrong that while we were out buying some new gear that if Sith wanted to take the time to you know purchase the right to copy some spells from a wizard spell book into his that that would be doable yeah. I have a potion of resistance. But it's not caster level uh, 10. So it's not nearly as good. So, as it currently stands, I, I didn't have any unless if Wintermute wants to let me add it in. I haven't added it in on the spellbook or anything. If you want to give me a second to reconfigure my spells to accommodate Bark Skin. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Okay, so. And actually, guys, um, this would be a really good place to call it a night. <laughs> I think Wintermute's worn out from his surgery. A little bit. <laughs> that actually works well because I got five teenage boys that want to play Pathfinder all of a sudden, so I gotta go. <laughs> six, six teenage boys that want to play Pathfinder. So apparently I'm about to go play Pathfinder. Thanks so, for running the game, Winter. We'd hope you're feeling better. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, thanks. All right, and gentlemen, we will see you next Saturday. No, we won't. Sith decided he hates us. He's, he's going to get his spells all set up so he won't be here. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, I will... Uh, Seth is busy setting up his spell this week. Try again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Mark's, good. Mark's skin is plus four, to nat plus four natural, right? At this point, it's plus four to natural, yes. And a potion of bark skin would only give plus two to natural, so... Like, I have a plus two natural armor amulet. The bark skin would add, take it up to plus four t total, right? So it's like an extra two AC. And it lasts 110, 100 minutes at this point. So if you give one to each of us whenever we're going into a, basically like a dungeon like this, and it's going to last the whole time because it's nearly two hours. So basically, like, my heroism is giving everyone a little bit more attack and skills. Your bark skin is giving everyone a little bit more AC as a long-term buff. And the shield is good, but, like, I don't actually benefit from your shield spell, because I have a plus three buckler at this point, but Poppy would love it, and obviously it's helpful to you if you get attacked. The effect looks like that, right? Yes. Though, because of the bug and fantasy grounds, we may need to potentially adjust the exact number. 
Well, for now we'll go with that, and then yeah, uh, yeah. next time I play we can uh, we can go from there. Sounds good. Oh, I gotta, yeah, I gotta do some memorization. So the, uh, yeah. All right. Well, Eric, I sure I will see you next week. Uh, Steph, have a great week, and we'll see you week after. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. See you. And see you. Hey, hey Winter Mute. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Edolian's schedule is, but it may be helpful if it out possible for either channel. you and he to schedule a time, or I'm willing to try to be there if I can. So we can get his character actually like leveled up and set up for the current situation. Okay. Because right, because he's still back at level nine at this point, and he's going to be kind of lost in terms of buying stuff. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll send him an email and see what we can set up. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you later. Later. User disconnected, disconnected. from your channel.